Hello, everyone. It is Monday night, September 16th, which means it's my son's birthday tomorrow, which means I should have had a present by now. <laughs> but I don't. Um, we are going to be doing a couple things today. Where the heck is my notebook? Here it is. I've got a little visioning exercise from Bob Heilig. If you listen to his recent podcast, you'll know what it is anyway, but I just wanted to talk us through that. Jackie's got some training on Instagram, and then we're going to do um, a multi-step little quick action item um, relating to Jackie's talk and um, something else. So anyway, we are at the midway point of September, and we are at an interesting place in time because the morning meltdown packages are going to become less attractive to people as they start to realize that it's going to become live in, in BOD. So you want to talk to them about the benefit of getting the materials. You want to talk to them about the, the book and all that kind of stuff and still highlighting that as being kind of a, a way to go, and since that is the, um, the sale item. Um, but just don't use don't lose them based on that still consider six weeks of the work still consider all the, the stuff i've been directing so many people still to 21 day fix real time because i think it's just a really great starting point um, and kind of giving them let's get you started and you have these two options you can either play around for two weeks while morning meltdown comes out or you can start with 21 day fix real time so it's a good way to get people started um we are in the last quarter just about the last quarter of the year so really looking ahead and figuring out what you would like to accomplish by the end of the year and just kind of working backwards and reaching out to your upline or to me if you want to chat about how you can make those things work and what kind of game plan is realistic for you i'm happy to talk to you about that um, but it's just a fun time school is underway for now everybody officially i know we've been kind of all trickling in back to school in the last few weeks and we're hopefully writing our ships and finding our you know schedules and all of that and you can find your way to dial in and i mentioned those things and they're not typically the type of stuff that i like to you know always bring up because i know you guys know how to read coach office if you don't know how to read coach office go learn how to log into coach office and see the announcements yourself but understanding where we stand currently as a company is really your duty as a business owner and it's really your duty as um, your own boss and as a coach whether you plan on coaching other people or routinely doing that or just helping people once in a while or just in it for the discount understanding what's available is necessary. I mean, I even just the other day had a person who's been a discount coach of mine for um, a year, I think since LaFour, reach out to me because someone wanted Beachbody On Demand and she wasn't sure what current packages were. Always keep yourself in the know. It's, it's really a benefit to you because whether you're actively working the business or accidentally working the business, having that knowledge, you're, you're only going to gain from it. So just stay in the loop, stay current, stay ready to understand what you have available to you, what tools you have available to you. Always reach out to us when you have questions, but find the way to keep yourself informed. It's really important. And while you're keeping yourself informed, keep a vision of yourself at the forefront of that as well. It's very easy to think about our whys, what first got us started, um, but something, and I can't remember how you worded it, Leslie, this was a couple weeks ago, you posted something um, where you said, is it like your forever why, well, how did you, your work in progress, why, what did you word it? Do you remember, is that what it was? It was something like that. You don't have to, you can type it, you can say it, you don't even have to, but it was something like that evolving yes you're ever evolving why that is the thing that just hit me when she posted that the other day not hit me enough that I remembered apparently the wording of it and I'm fucking like uh, but you're ever evolving why it is the reason you got started but there's also a why in the reason that you're continuing today there's a why in the reason that you do your workouts there's a why in the reason you want to build a business there's a why in the reason you want this community there's a why in the reason you show up for these calls there is so much to your why it's not just one sentence anymore it's not just to lose the baby weight it's not just to get healthy in this side of things or it's all of it it is all of it. And it's so important for us to keep that evolving why in mind. And to do so, think about what you want for your life in the future and really think about what it's going to take to get you there. And that's where Bob ha um, Heilig came in today. He took a lot of this from the book, um, the 
the whatever the life-changing magic of thinking big um, and he walks us through this process of asking some questions I'm gonna do this for you uh, you can go back and play this recording again and so I'm doing this in the beginning so it should be easy to find so you don't have to worry about really taking the time to do it now because it could take you 10 15 20 30 minutes to kind of think this through but as you move through your business as you move through your workouts as you move through your life keep your evolving why in mind and allow it to remain flexible digging in towards this end result that you're hoping for so here's what i'd like you to do when you have a space and quiet and a notebook and to journal this out imagine exactly what you want your life to look like 10 years from today do not put any limitations on it from where you stand right now take the filter off take the judgments off take the fear off really think it through and he says to let go of the current circumstances that have been holding you back let go of the fear let go of past failure let go of all of that and just let it fly and to ask yourself these questions to help this vision dial in what does your ideal self look like what does your ideal self think and feel of yourself what kind of emotions show up for you every day when you are that ideal self? What does your business feel like and look like both on the inside and the outside? What's your level of income in 10 years? What's your spiritual life like? What contributions are you making to the world? What does your health look like? And I love this part. How do the people who care about you look at you? How would they describe you? How have you impacted their lives? How have you created meaning for them? And thinking about that, 10 years, everything out of the way, the path is clear. What is that going to be for you? And reaching for that every single day. It's these little itty bitty activities of knowing the coach office, of reaching out and helping a couple people, of crafting a good post, of doing the follow up, of organizing your, your Google streak or your calendar or checking in with your challengers. It's those little activities that are gonna build up to this dream life. And more, of course, it's not just gonna be magic, right? It takes more, but it's the little, and they always see this on the national makeup call or in all these big speeches. They say it's the stuff that's not sexy. It's the unsexy stuff. They love that word. It's so fun for them. But that's what it is. It's these little day-to-day -day activities, the unsexy stuff that lead to these big, sexy, awesome freaking lives that we all deserve and we all can have. And we have to keep those in mind and realize it's the nitty gritty little daily activities that are going to get us there. So create that vision for yourself. Give yourself space this week when you can, when you're quiet, when you're alone, when you're outside eating your cucumbers, when you can just do this for yourself. Okay. Cause I know it's the only time Leslie can be alone. So when she's outside and eat your cucumbers at nine o'clock at night, I'll do this in the Walmart parking lot later. Inside joke. Okay. Moving on, Jackie, you can take over. Jackie wants to talk to us about Instagram and tell us where you got this idea from. I forget which podcast you said That's, was so good. That's okay. Um, it is from the, hold on, I have it. Um, I think it's the Making Chic Happen podcast, which is the Melanie Mitchell one, and it's episode 22. Um, and, hold on, where is it? What's it called? It was like, it was, the name of it was like, I'll turn it off, the three mistakes you're making in your business or whatever, but the, the most, the meat of the podcast was um, this expert um, and how she talks about how to create an Instagram post. Um, and she talks about how her story is that um, she was kind of like a bad teenager um, and her parents took her to like a Tony Robbins seminar and it kind of just changed her life and she had a vision for what she wanted. So then she went to college and she was going to become a life coach and she had all these ideas, um, but she didn't really have clients. So everyone kept telling her you're motivational and you're inspirational, but she wasn't selling anything. She wasn't making any money. So she said she had to figure out how to take it from great, I'm motivating and inspiring people, but what am I actually providing them that is a service that they're going to buy from me? 
Um, so I thought that was really helpful for us because I feel like people say, you know, to us all the time, I love seeing your posts. They really inspire me to do X, Y, and Z, but we're also trying to sell ourselves. So like what will get us from there to there? Um, so let me take out my notes. Um, she started with just like three quick tips, like three mistakes that um, people make a lot on social media. So I'll do those first. Um, the first mistake was, and I know Pam and the other girls talk about this all the time, is like not knowing your ideal client. Um, and I feel like we all know deep down the people that we really connect with, but sometimes when we're writing Instagram posts, we're thinking, well, I don't want to just say moms, because what if there's people out there might be watching who aren't moms, or I don't want to call up teachers, but... Uh, you know, because maybe other people might be interested. But she talks about how if you really hone in on your ideal audience, your avatar, your people, you're more likely to get them um, involved with you as opposed to just creating a generic post. Um, so she talked about really knowing your ideal client and not being afraid to speak directly to those people. Um, another quick tip and mistake that people make is they try to craft like these long and lengthy, wordy, um, not necessarily posts, but instead of just saying what they want to say, they try to make it sound all flashy and creative. And people reading your post might not know what you're talking about. So she says, if you want to help busy moms lose weight, just say that. If you want to help people prioritize you know, themselves in a day, just say it, because you're more likely to get a reaction from the people that are reading it. And then the third mistake um, was that people are afraid to make mistakes. And I know we talk about that all the time. But what she said that stuck out to me was when you try something new, you have to say to yourself, this is either going to be a winning experience and it's going to go well, or it's going to be a learning experience. And if you treat it like that, you won't be afraid to do it because you'll either get something out of it or you'll learn something from that. So I thought that was really helpful for me to hear because I feel like sometimes we're afraid to like go live like me I hate going live so but you'll either it'll either go really well or you'll learn what to not to do the next time so those were just her three quick tips um and then she went into how to actually write a Instagram post which I thought was super helpful because I know sometimes I have an idea and then I type something up on my phone six times and it sounds like crap every time so here's what she talked about. She talked about how when you're driving down the road and you see a billboard and it's like a random Coca-Cola ad, you don't do anything. You see it and you move on. And that's what we don't want. We don't want people to see our posts and it just be like, oh, there's Jackie doing her workout or oh, Jackie's always drinking a shake or we don't want it to just be some random awareness of us. We want it to be a direct response ad, which means we are asking people to do something. It doesn't have to be our buy our product, but we want people to actually take action. Um, and then she went through the four parts that your post should always have so that people take action. Okay, so I'll start. The first one is it should have some sort of headline, something that makes people stop scrolling. Because when they're looking through Instagram, most people are just looking at the pictures. I know I do. When I scroll through my feed, I'm mostly looking at the pictures. And then if the first line looks interesting, I might stop and read it. So she says you have to create a post where that first line stops people. So you have a few options. You can shock them by saying something ridiculous. Um, you can entertain them by saying something, you know, funny or just like awe them. Um, and while you're doing that, you might want to call out your ideal person. So like I was thinking something like, um, even asking them a question, like, are you a mom of lots of kids trying to survive mornings back to school? You know, something that's going to appeal to your audience. Are you a teacher who forgot to go to the bathroom today? Just something where people are going to read it and it's going to connect with them and they're going to probably read on because they're connecting with what you're saying. So that's your headline. Then you want to go into the intrigue and that's part two. Um, and in this part two, you're appealing to people's emotions and experiences, but also saying how you're making it work. Um, 
So if you're writing a post on a Monday because you had a really rough day, you kind of want to take them through that with you. You want them to experience the emotion you're experiencing. If you were frazzled and stressed and running around, you want to talk about that with them. Um, and then the next part, which I thought was the value, and we always talk about that, is that your post should have value. But what she said that kind of stuck with me was, yes, you want your post to have value, but nowadays you can Google anything. You can Google tips for the morning. You can Google freezer meals. You can Google all the things that we're trying to help people do. But we can only explain it from our point of view. So we want to provide some sort of value that people aren't going to find on Google. Um, and I know we've done lots of trainings on that. So it's just something to keep in mind that what we provide needs to be something that only we can do. So if you want to take them through your morning routine, you want to weave in like storytelling about your life because otherwise they're just going to Google it and they're not going to come back to your page and they're not going to need to reach out to you for questions because it's something they could have found anywhere else. Um, and then the last part, which we've talked about, I know on other calls too, is the call to action. And this is kind of, this is the connection with the direct response. You want people to do something when they finish reading your post. So that doesn't have to be messaging you, but it could be. So she gave some suggestions um, that they can comment, that they can express interest, they can message you. Or if you feel like you are being too salesy and you've done a lot of posts and you don't want people to feel like every post they read has them messaging you or commenting, it could just be that they are taking action. So maybe it's that they are going to change something in their routine or they are going to try a recipe, or they are going to say no to something they don't want to do, you want them to read your post and know what you're asking them to do. And that is the take action part. So there's four parts. It's the headline to get people to stop scrolling. It's the intrigue, where you're appealing to their emotions. It's the value, where you're giving them something they can't find on Google. And the call to action, where you are asking them to do something. And that's pretty much it. But it did help me when I was writing posts this week. I like had this in front of me and it made it easier for me to craft posts. And I don't always have a call to action, I'm going to admit it. But it was helpful that I felt like I was able to go through all four of these things and not feel like I was just rambling on my Instagram post and I didn't know which way I wanted to go. Thank you, Jackie. I love it. It's awesome. And it's good because I, I get stale and I'm sure a lot of us do where I, I feel like I'm in good zones and then I feel like I'm saying the same thing again and again and again and again and again and again, and again, and again, and again. <laughs> you know, so just kind of looking at it from a different perspective is always helpful. Thank you so very much. I love that. Headline, intrigue, value, and call to action is perfect. So our two-part action item is as follows. Number one, I would like everybody before they sign off to craft a post using these tips. If you've already posted tonight, save it and post it tomorrow. So now at least you'll have a post ready to go for tomorrow. So I suggest taking a peek at your feed, looking and see what you could use, like what kind of content, what kind of value that you haven't been giving lately. Maybe you haven't been giving a recipe lately. Maybe you haven't been giving morning routine tips, like Jackie said, or a move of the day or some kind of thing that's value driven. So look and see something that's not going to compete with your most recent post or most recent posts and something that will be value driven. If you haven't posted this evening, then go ahead and post it out tonight. When I post late at night, I try to tag West Coast locations so that I try to perhaps throw in or fall into their um, geotags, but if that's just a little tip. Um, and if you have posted this evening, like I just posted tonight, I knew Jackie was giving these tips, but I knew I had a black and white quote post that I had to post. <laughs> so I wanted to get it out of the way and I used Paxson's birthday to get that out of the way so that in the morning I can have my post that I'm going to craft right now with Jackie. And then the last thing I'd like you to do is an NFL power pocket. So if you don't remember what NFL stands for, it is five brand new invites, five follow-ups, and five love to leads. Go to five people, love on them, and then add a follower or follow somebody from those people's feeds. So um, 
five new invites, five follow-ups, and five love to leads before you sign off on the call. Try to do those things. Whichever is the dip more difficult task for you, if it's the invites, then do that first. If it's writing the post, then do that first. Always eat that frog and do the thing that's difficult for you first, or else you won't do it at all. You'll let the screaming kid upstairs distract you. Oh wait, is that just me? Mine won't be screaming till 4.30 a.m., so. I think we've moved past that stage in my house. I have the 3.45 a.m., everyone yells and jumps in my bed and then falls back asleep, thankfully. But my alarm goes off in 15 minutes, and that's like, I have 15 minutes of sleep, people. But they're still awake up there. I don't know how I'll be getting to Walmart. Maybe that's the post I need. <laughs> a picture of me in the Walmart parking, or, you know, in my school clothes and slippers. I think people would really relate to that. 